Hi, sewing friends. Welcome back to Sewing with Sin. It's been a while. I have not tried very many new things in my sewing. Um, and for this reason, I'm here today because I'm trying something I haven't tried before. And I would like to make a video for myself so I can remember the steps of what I'm doing. But also for you all out there who have never tried making um, this particular shirt, um, I hope this is helpful for you. So today I'm going to be working on the closet case, um, closet case patterns, the Kelly shirt. I already have a tutorial for that shirt, so I've made that shirt before, but um, the shirt that I have um, already shared on YouTube is the view A. So today I'm going to be doing view B, and this particular um, video I'm going to be focusing on this um, placket right here. So I've never made a placket before. I've done the um, button down shirt like this before, but I've never made a placket and actually I've really been nervous about doing this for some reason. So I prepared myself a little bit and checked out some other videos on YouTube of just plackets in general and the concept um, behind making them. Uh, because when I looked at um, the instructions here um, in this little booklet, I already got a little confused. So. Um, just a reminder that my videos are not really tutorials per se, but it's sort of like watch me learn and learn with me. Um, and I will hopefully be able to guide you uh, to a successful <laughs> shirt with a popover placket. So I'm not doing um, I'm not doing the extra collar. I don't know what that's called, the fold over collar. I'm just doing um, the collar band because I just, I am not really into collars. So the collar band with the pop over placket. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be focusing on today. So I'm gonna, um, actually, let me just show you now. Hold on one second. Okay, so you're gonna need, um, this is the placket pattern. Um, I traced it from the pattern. I don't ever cut directly from the pattern just because my size changes sometimes or the size isn't correct. So I always trace it first. Um, so this right here is the placket and I've cut it out already. Um, and oops, I accidentally cut two, you only need one. And then you'll need the front of your shirt. So this is the front, this is what the front of my shirt is gonna look like. And so one thing I already found that was a little, a little annoying to be honest, <laughs> is this um, placket, the way that it's drawn on the pattern, um, if you're trying to put this on your fabric, like mark it out, it's really hard because you basically have to flip this paper upside down and then try to trace it on your placket. Um, so what I did instead, this is what I would say was the, is the first thing to do before you even start sewing anything is transfer the information from here onto here. And for me, the most important information to transfer with like a chalk or one of those washable pins is the, um, the stitch line. So there's two stitch lines that go all the way down, um, Oh, I'm holding it upside down. <laughs> the two stitch lines go all the way down and then it closes right there. So what I did was I got my um, my little measuring tool and I just kind of measured like where, what's the distance between that? And then I marked it on my fabric. So here you could kind of see like the blue chalk that I marked. That's what I marked with the chalk. The other parts like, so for example, right here, it says full, this is gonna be a fold and this is gonna be a fold. What I did was I just snipped it into my fabric right here. I hope you could see that. And right here, I snipped it. So that way when I'm ready to fold and iron that, I already know where those markings are at. You're gonna need to do that on this side as well. I snipped it right here and I snipped it right here. So when I iron, I'll already see where that distance is at. Otherwise, if you're trying to trace it on here, all of these lines, it's, it's just it's gonna be really time consuming. You can do that, of course. It's just kind of tricky, like I said, because you have to flip it upside down to, in order to do that. 
Um, oh, probably another thing that I should trace and I haven't yet are where the buttons will be going. So I'll do that right now. And then I'm gonna come right back with the next step. Okay, y'all, so I have my front shirt laid out with this. I put an X right here just to remind me that this is the wrong side of my shirt and this is the right side of my shirt. Even though it looks exactly the same, it's important just to know that. And I also marked right here, I took um, not this one. If you look at the pattern piece, when you cut it out, it shows where the button placket should go. So here I have a, um, a line and this is where it should end. So I didn't, I don't think it's important to draw that line and you'll see why in just a second. But basically what I did was I lined it up with my middle crease. So when you're cutting your shirt, you'll already naturally have a crease right there. And I just kind of finger pressed it because that crease is where you're going to be cutting in a little bit. And then I lined up the top of this and just made a little mark with my pencil of where the end of the placket will be. That's probably the most important to make sure that you mark. That's the end of my placket. So then I'm taking out my placket and the directions say to add interfacing to the placket. I'm not going to, I'm sorry, I'm skipping that step just because I don't think it's necessary with this fabric that I'm using, but I'll find out later if I was wrong, hopefully not. But if you do add interfacing, just follow the directions for that at the beginning of, um, of your instruction booklet. So then what I'm doing now is I'm taking, this is the wrong side of my placket. This is the right side. So you're gonna put right side to wrong side of shirt. Um, and here's how I know this is the wrong side. This is where I put all my markings at. So I wanna make sure that that's facing me and the right side is facing the wrong side of the shirt. So I'm gonna line up, um, first I'm gonna line up the bottom of this placket line that I made with the bottom of this placket line right here. So I'm lining that up first and it should line up with the top of the shirt right up here. Yes, it does. And I'm also just trying to hope that the pattern of the shirt lines up a little bit. It might not perfectly, but that's okay with me too. Okay, so it looks lined up down there. It's lined up right here in the middle. And another thing that I'm trying to do is where this crease was at, in my shirt right here, there's a cre crease. I'm trying to line that up right here with the middle of these two stitch lines. So here are my two stitch lines right here. I'm trying to line up the crease of the shirt with the middle. And for me, it actually really nicely works out that um, the middle of my two stitch lines, there happens to be this cross um, grain of white. So I know for me, that's gonna be the middle. For you, you might have to measure it out and that's okay too. If you wanna be really sure, um, you can take your, where's my little measuring tool at? Uh, here you are. You can take your measuring tool and see like, it's about an inch. So a half an inch is where that middle line will be. So I'm just checking, yeah, a half an inch is where my middle seam is going to be. That's gonna be where we cut eventually, but we're not on that step yet. Okay, so now that it's placed here, I'm gonna pin it in place. Pin all of this down, just so nothing wiggles around when I get ready to stitch it down. I should also note, I just realized, um, I did not do any of the pre-ironing of these folds. So for example, it says that you're gonna have to fold it here and you're gonna fold it again. I'm just gonna iron that as I get to that part. Um, and the reason why is because this fabric, I know like if I pre-iron it, um, 
it might still need an extra creasing after. I just don't know if it's gonna stay really crisp. So I'm kind of skipping that step, but don't worry, I'm gonna go back to that step when we get there. Okay, so, oh, it's hard to see on the camera. This is my placket. And I have it all pinned all the way around now. Here's where the two stitch lines are and they end right here. Okay, so now the next um, step it says with a, let me just take a quick peek, with a short stitch length stitch around the perimeter of the opening, sewing the placket to the shirt. Um, and then you're gonna leave the needle down as you pivot around that rectangle. So I'm gonna start on my right side of my shirt um, and I'm gonna sew all the way that down that blue line that I had already drawn for the placket. And then, um, well, I'm just gonna do it with you because it won't take very long. Don't forget to backstitch. This shirt worked out perfectly because I kind of already have a line here with the white on the olive green, which is really helpful. We'll see how it lines up with the with the shirt pattern too. Okay, then I'm close to the bottom of my placket and I just put my needle down. Let me see if I could zoom in for you a little bit. Uh, there we go, much better. I put my needle down and now I'm gonna pivot. So I lifted up my um, presser foot. I'm gonna pivot my shirt around to get that bottom line right there. I went just a tiny bit too far. Then keep that needle down, lift your presser foot up and shift your shirt so you can go all the way back up the other side. So that way it's one continuous um, stitch line. Okay, now I'm gonna go all the way back up. what it should look like. My stitch line is all the way along the, um, the line that I had drawn before. Okay, let's see what we do next. Okay, here is the top of my shirt and this is the bottom of that placket. And the next direction say you're going to get a pair of uh, fabric scissors and cut open straight down the middle of that placket. And wait, hold on, you don't go all the way down. Let me just double check. Um, cut down the middle of the opening till approximately three fourths from the corners. Um, and the reason why is because at the bottom of the placket, well, it the opening of the placket and ends right here and then this is where we're going to stitch like a little x right there so there should be like a triangle at the bottom and it says three fourth inches from the bottom so what i might just do is mark it with my chalk right now so i don't accidentally cut down too far so i'm going to line up the bottom of this let me fold it right here just so i could see it better that's the bottom of my placket and the bottom right there. And then this is the point where I'm going to stop cutting. So I'm going to try to mark that if I can. I really need to get a, um, I really want to get the washable pins. Um, cause this is, this chunk was, has been like a little difficult. And so I marked it right there. I know you can barely see it. Let me try to zoom in for you. I really don't have like 
any fancy equipment for videotaping. I'm just using a tripod right here. Okay, and then it said in the directions about three fourths from the bottom. So um, I think that's about there. Yep. I'm just gonna mark that line all the way across. So I'm gonna cut from the top of my shirt which is right here. I'm gonna cut straight down that middle. That's like a half an inch. It should be, remember we I was measuring it for you, like those two stitches is about an inch and then a half an inch is right in the middle. I'm gonna cut it down all the way to there, to that line. Let me just double check too before I, before I cut my shirt open and make a mistake. Mm, carefully slip into the corner without slipping into the edge. Okay, here we go. Crossing my fingers so that I don't make a mistake. Um, you're gonna cut into not just your placket, but into the shirt too. So, how can I do this um, with the tripod right here? Hang on one second, I gotta, I gotta move you around a little bit. Okay. And then, Here's the middle, and I'm just gonna try to cut down. For me, it's these white crosses of the, the pattern of the shirt that are really helping me keep that pretty even. Okay. I think it would have been easier to use my rotary cutter probably but then you could accidentally cut too far so I don't know about that okay so I'm cutting up to that line then that looks good so far and then it says you're gonna make a cut from here to wait hold on you can't see what I'm doing and it's really hard to see. There it is, it's a little bit better. From there to that corner and there to that corner. So I'm trying to cut a triangle out right now. And you could always just do what I'm doing, just double check that this is what they're asking you to do. Yep, okay, here we go. Cutting <laughs> cutting into a shirt is making me so nervous because if I make a mistake like that, this whole thing is a goner. But let's see. Like that part is pretty self-explanatory, I think. I'm gonna cut a tiny bit more. I'm sorry, y'all. This is like a weird angle for me to try to cut at, so I'm doing it really slow so I don't make a mistake. I'm gonna cut to careful not to cut into your stitch line that you just made. I'm just kind of cutting right as close as I can. And you know what I'm gonna do? To be even extra safe is I'm gonna take out these shears. These are the, they're gonna get like really crispy to the point right here. You're gonna to wanna to get as close to your stitch line as possible. Um, that way it opens up correctly. Okay, now I'm gonna go from this point to that corner right there. As close to the stitch line as I can. I hope you could kind of see what I'm doing. I know it's kind of a, it's hard with this pattern of this shirt. Okay. And let me try to show you like, there's the triangle and I stitched as close to the stitch, I cut as close to the stitch line as I could. And hopefully I didn't actually cut through the stitch line. No, looks good. Ooh, I feel like I could sew that again one more time, maybe. It looks a little... Oh my gosh, you know what I just realized? I'm looking at my sewing machine right now. I didn't stitch on the tightest stitch. I actually stitched on a basting stitch. So this stitch is wider than it's supposed to be. That's why it looks like it's coming loose a little bit. You know what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to go back and just re-stitch over it with a really tight stitch. 
Yeah, that's too loose. I accidentally did the wrong stitch. Um, hopefully you didn't do that. This needs to be stronger. So I'm just gonna reinforce it with another another layer of, um, of stitching right there and then I'll be right back for the next step. The next step says to flip this entire placket away. Oh, hold on, let me just confirm with you that I am on the wrong side of my shirt right now. And this will be the right side of the placket. So right now, this is what it looked like when you sewed it and you cut it open. And then next, it says fold this placket to the right side of the shirt. So right now, I'm just going to tuck it under. To the right side of the shirt and then I'm gonna flip it over actually I feel like I should pin it really quick because it might just come all out when I flip it now I'm gonna flip it to the right side of the shirt so this is the front right and the placket here it is let me take out those pins Okay, then it says, um, turn the placket to the right side of the garment and press it well, ensuring a clean, crisp joint placket. Um, oh, I know what they mean. Okay, so here's the placket, right? And this is what it will look like eventually when it's folded over. But right now, I'm gonna press these seams in towards the placket. Didn't really say that, does it? Ensuring a clean crisp between the placket and the shirt. So I'm pressing it. I'm gonna press it towards, I'm assuming, even though it didn't say that, I'm gonna press these the seam allowance toward, um, toward the placket. I don't know, should I have pressed it the other way? I don't know if that matters. Because eventually, this is going to be folded, I think, and that will be folded. Huh. I hope I'm pressing it in the right direction. And then, that bottom square, I'm just going to push that those corners down. Okay. Then I'm even going to press right here. You can see this is where the seam was, where we sewed it over here on this side. So I'm going to fold it and press it right there as well. So it's crisp on that side and crisp on these bottoms. Who is it, Petunia? That's my dogs. Um, luckily, they're not barking today. They're just hearing somebody come home, probably. Maybe my husband's home. Okay, then I'm gonna fold it that way too and press it right on that seam allowance crease that I have there already. And let's see what comes next. I think we're gonna be here at the ironing space again too. Ooh, look how crisp that looks. So this is the front of my shirt, the right side facing. And I already ironed these seams in towards the placket. And then I did a little iron here because I just wanted to check to see before I make this video what I needed to do. So remember over here where I showed you I made my little snips. I did a snip here and a snip here, and that's where the folds are supposed to be. Um, I wasn't sure if the fold is supposed to go in like this or if the fold was supposed to be creased that way. And um, it should be creased this way. So what you're gonna do next is get your iron and crease wherever, if you drew that line, great, or if you just made a snip, great. Um, to me, I even, for me, I even like measured it. It's just a little bit past 
um, are just a little bit under half an inch. I don't know, that's like 3 16th or something like that. So I measured it and then I'm gonna bring it over here and iron that in. I ironed it a little bit, but this fabric is, um, it doesn't really hold the, the crease very well. So I'm gonna iron that again. And then on this side, it also needs to be ironed in that same, that same amount, about just under, it was just under a half. So crease that all the way down, really good. And then, what's the next step so this is what it looks like now my fold is here my fold is here then um Chris between the placket you may need to replus the packet along the indicated folded lines um then um I'm gonna work with this side first I think they're calling this the um the left side of the placket, pull the left side of the placket towards the center front, tuck seam under. This is the picture that I'm working with right here. Um, it says, fold the left side. So in the picture, it looks like the left side is the shorter side. Um, so you know how in the pocket it has this extra hanging piece right here. I guess they're gonna call that the right side and this is the left side. So it says, fold the left side placket towards the center front. Um, and that's where that little snip was, that other snip. So there's a snip here and there's a snip here. I'm gonna fold it that way and press it along that fold. And I can measure that too, just double check. It looks like it's gonna be about an inch that's probably about an inch once it's folded let's see so just a little over an inch and I'm gonna press that down uh, if you did interfacing you should probably feel you could feel the interfacing is probably about an inch and that's where you would know where to fold it to Mine just doesn't have interfacing, so it's gonna feel a little different. And I'm also trying to make sure that I'm covering up that seam line underneath. And that looks good, I think. Okay, I'm gonna press that. I'm curious to see what it looks like on the other side too, so I'll show you in just a second. So the bottom almost looks like it has like a little V right now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this in place because I know we're gonna have to stitch that down. I think what happens next, oh yeah, right there. Okay, so then we're gonna stitch down, top stitch on the outside edge of the placket. So then we're gonna top stitch on the edge all the way down. Um, is it all the way down to the bottom? No. Stopping around the little triangle. Oh, okay, so when you sew this edge right here down, you're gonna make sure that you stop right around there. So you have about a half an inch that you're not gonna sew all the way down. I don't know, I can't really understand why that is. I don't know the why behind that, but I'm sure it'll make sense once we get there. Okay, then, what does it look like on the back? Let's just see. Oh, okay, that looks like a nice crisp line on the back. It's like tucked under there. Oh, you know what you should always, we should be checking for too, 
is when I sew on the opposite side, I'm going to be sewing right here. Just making sure that everything is nice and neat in the back too. Something is like puckering right there. I don't like that. What is that pucker? I don't want to see that. Uh, that's better. Ooh, I'm going to pin that in place right there. That might help. So I'm pinning that. Right now I'm on the back side of the shirt. I'm gonna pin that down because I don't wanna sew past that either. I don't know why I'm whispering. I'm just really focused right now. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna flip back to the right side of the shirt. And there we go. Okay. Then, so we're gonna sew that down, but I also might as well just iron this side while I'm here. Let me see, what do we need to press? It's going to be pressed, I think, like, well, first I have to find that snip. My snip is right there, you can barely see it. And then the other snip is right up here. So I find where those snips are at, and I'm, I'm gonna fold it along that line. So what you would do is turn it this way and then find that snip. There's my snip. And oh, that makes sense. Look, it's covering where my stitches were. My stitches are right here and I'm covering them up. And that's pretty much where that line is at. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I think that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm just gonna, oh, it's starting to look good. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting it nice and straight. And then before I iron it down. Okay, now I'm gonna iron that down. pattern on my fabric is almost lining up so it looks pretty nice like that then I'm gonna press down this down here too let me just pin that in place what does it look like on the opposite side okay You know what sucks is that I marked the buttons over here. Like I marked them right here on the inside. So I don't know, I guess I have to remark them again on this side. I mean, you could always find where you want the buttons to go to. Those are like suggested spots for the buttons. Um, but when you trace them, it's on the wrong side, and now you're going to need it on the right side, so that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, I'll think about that when I get to that step. So I think it's, it will look like this, and it will go over like that, and I'm just making sure, like, look, there's, like, this weird pucker thing right here. I just got to, like, I think I just have to fiddle around with it a little bit. Oh, and make sure that it's folded in correctly, too. Hmm. Okay, that's looking good. And I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine because I'm going to work on this. Um, that's considered the left side and this is the right side. So I'll take it over to the machine to top stitch that down. I have my left side of my shirt. This is the side um, that has the shorter um, placket side. So it says that you're gonna stitch down all along the edge, the outer edge. So that's the left side of this placket. I'm just gonna stitch it all the way down as close to the edge as I can. And don't forget that you're not going all the way to the bottom, you're going to that point where um, the triangle was right here at the bottom. Remember that little triangle that I clipped? So I'm going to sew all the way up until that spot right there.
Okay, I'm getting really close to that spot, so I'm just gonna go a little bit slower. And then I'm gonna take off my pin and get down just a little bit more. Make sure that everything is nice and crisp down there. You could also feel, like I'm feeling right here, I could feel where that that line is at. Yeah, it's maybe like, I'm sure it's not a big deal if you're not right on that spot, but if you pull it on on the back side, I sewed really close to that, to the end of the placket, where the end of the placket will go. Okay, then I'm going to snip that and then we're going to work on the right side of the placket next. I put the right side of my placket ready to go. I'm going to sew all the way along the outer edge of that placket and then again along the inner edge. And I'm going to sew down again to that triangle spot. So I'm going to make sure to stop. I should probably put a pin right there so I could remember where to stop. Right about here. So I'll put a pin right there so I know where to be to stop at. And that will help me remember not to go all the way down. So I'm gonna sew down here and sew down here and just for the sake of saving time, um, I will show you what that looks like when I'm done. Here's what the right side of the placket should look like after you've sewed um, a stitch seam all the way on the edge of that side and all the way down the left side. Um, and then here's what the bottom should look like. If it's open, it looks like that. That's folded in. So that little square that little and those two little edges this folds in and then this folds in on top of that and it everything should hopefully line up without any puckering so i see like a tiny pucker right there but i think it'll smooth out once i iron everything and and finish this last part of the placket so this last part of the placket you could just fold it in like that right and give it a straight crease and then stitch around there. But their placket has like a little, a little diamond point, which looks a lot nicer. So that's gonna be the next thing that we do. And um, I'm actually really happy with this. It turned out pretty good for my first time ever doing a placket. Let's see what the back looks like really quick too. Oh, nice. Everything is tucked in there really nice. And then when we sew the other side, when we sew that bottom um, diamond at the bottom, or the arrow, it's really more like an arrow pointing, all of this will be sewed down. So that looks pretty clean, very crisp. I'm pretty happy with that. So it looks like we only have just this last step to go. And then after that, um, would be the buttons, but I actually am going to wait to do the buttons until my shirt is finished. I would love to show you that um, process of adding my buttons, um, but I kind of want to wait until um, I finish the whole shirt to see like where exactly I want the buttons once I put it on. So I think I'll make a separate tutorial for adding the buttons and then you can just click on that whenever if you're working on the placket too. So we got one more step to go. Now the final step is folding in the edge or the, this very end of the placket. So what I just did right now is I pressed all of this down just to make sure Everything looks good, everything's in place. I flipped it around the back too, just to double check that everything is tucked in nice and neat back here. And everything looks ready for this final step. 
Okay, let's see. Now what I think I need to do is flip it over and the directions say you fold one corner a 45 degree angle. I think that's a 45 degree angle, right? And then iron it and then fold it down another triangle. So you should have like a really mini triangle right there. And then it will be um, sewed down like this. But I could see that, um, I could see how you could not have an, an even point at the end. So I'm gonna try to be really careful about that. And I, I think I'm just gonna trim a tiny bit of this off right here, just a teeny tiny bit. Cause I don't know, it's just, it's fraying a lot right there. Okay, and I think that might make it easier. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it on the other side. Then it says fold one side by a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna to try to be as precise as I could possibly be. That looks, it's kind of moving around a little bit. So, and then I'm gonna press that down. And when I'm ironing it, I'm actually like pressing it really firm. Okay, then let's just see what that looks like. Okay, then I'm gonna fold down the other side 45 degrees that way. So I went from this corner down to this corner. And that looks pretty good. I hope it's even. The moment of truth when you flip it over to the other side. My worry is that like this extra stuff right here is gonna come out. I'll see right now. I might trim it, trim it down or something because it's kind of in the way for some reason. I'm not sure why. If I maybe sewed something wrong. Okay. And let's see how that looks. That looks uneven. And I even see like thread coming out, which is really bothering me. So let me fix that. You know what? It's hard to tell if it's even or not with the pattern on my fabric. But I guess what you could do too is like measure to see, is it the same? That's about one inch. No, it's not the same. What's going on here? Hmm. I'm going to try folding it again. And you might have to do that too, like just fold it a couple of times to make sure you get that even point on both sides. I mean, you know, it's really a matter of how much of a perfectionist you are. <laughs> like, if a tiny bit of a difference doesn't bother you, then it's okay if it's not perfect. I always try to remind myself that too, that there's beauty in the imperfections of a handmade garment and that's okay too. Oh, that's a lot better. Okay, that looks more even, doesn't it? I know it's a little hard to see. Yeah, that looks much better. And let me just check the... Okay, just under an inch, just under an inch. Okay, that's a lot better. But I don't know if you could see this, but like there's a tiny bit of this fabric underneath popping out. So I'm going to try to like make sure that it's tucked in really good. Because when I, there we go, that's a lot better. Because I'm going to try to pin this down in place right now. 
I'm gonna pin it over here to make sure that um, that that other extra fabric that's underneath this gets sewed into that. You don't want that sticking out. I'm just taking my time with this. Like, I don't know. I imagine that making this placket would take about an hour. It's definitely taken more than an hour, but you know, whenever you're doing something for the first time, like I try to give myself a lot of grace. And if I don't meet the expectation, that's okay too. Okay. There's a few little pieces of thread coming out, but when I sew that, it should be okay. Like I'll make sure that it gets tucked under there, okay? And then I always like to double check the back just to make sure everything looks good back here. Looks good. I know you could barely see it, sorry. There you go. That's what the back looks like right there. Okay, I'm gonna go take this over to the machine. Now on the machine, we're gonna make a straight line here, go all the way to each edge around there, and then I'm gonna make a cross here, tack it right there, and then another cross right here. That's what it shows in the, in the book as well. So I'll meet you over at the machine. So I put my shirt in um, sideways, because I'm gonna start by stitching a straight line across, and then I'm gonna go down and pivot around and then I'll make that X after. So I'm gonna remove this first needle and start right where my stitching stopped from earlier. And then I'm gonna go nice and slow cause I don't wanna have any weird puckers. I hope you could see what I'm doing. Hey, hey. Sorry. Okay, and then put your needle, keep it down, and then I'm going to shift my shirt. Now I'm gonna carefully sew down and what I'm trying to do right now is tuck in like all those little extra pieces of fabric that were sticking out. I'm trying to go as close to the edge as I can too. I really hope my hand's not getting in the way when I'm taping this for you. I'm doing my best trying to make sure that you could see what I'm doing. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, then I keep my needle down and I'm gonna rotate it again as close to the edge as I can go. Uh. Okay, then keep your needle down every time you turn angles. Okay, then I'm gonna go up to this corner. Uh, oh no, I think I went off. Let's see. Yeah, I passed it. So I have to take off one of these stitches. I'm gonna unpick one of the stitches and I'll be right back. Okay, I had to unpick a few stitches and just like making I'm gonna go really slow because I want to make sure that I don't go too far and uh, I already went too far I have to back stitch one it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing that's the problem and then keep the needle down when you rotate it and just make sure that everything on this side is tucked in underneath before you stitch it down. Hopefully that's what I did. Okay, then I'm gonna keep my needle down and turn it all the way around. And 
here's the bottom of my pocket. Now in this last step, I'm gonna make that little X at the bottom of the placket. So I'm gonna go from this top corner to this corner over here. Let me zoom out a tiny bit. I'm going from this corner to this corner. And I'm just trying to angle it so I know that I'll get to that corner without, well, trying to be as even as I can possibly be. stitch that okay then I have to clip that where's my scissors so I'm gonna clip that thread clip the thread underneath and I'm gonna put it back in to do the second half of that little X Okay, can you see that? There's one X, part of the X, and the other one's gonna be right on, I'm gonna start on this side now, right at the edge of that corner, and I'm gonna try to get a crisp line right there. Don't forget to backstitch. I feel like it's not gonna be a completely even X, but I'm okay with that. And I think it looks pretty good. Let me um, let me take it out of here and then I'll come right back. Here's what the back looks like. I need to clip all my extra threads, but that's what the back will look like. And let's turn it over to the front. Here's what the front looks like. I'm really happy with how that turned out. I was a little nervous about it being a little uneven and then the rest of the placket, I will have to finish with buttons later and I'll show you that in a separate All video. Right, y'all. Here's what it looks like. And the placket on the bottom looking really good i'm really excited to finish this shirt um and i'll show you on um if you follow me on instagram i'll be sharing what it looks like afterwards i don't usually show the whole process on instagram anymore more just for youtube but you can find me at miss romo's creations on instagram and um Thank you again for joining me. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways that you can make a placket, but I was just trying to follow the directions as closely as I could for the Kelly shirt. So if that happens to be the shirt that you're working on and you're looking at the directions and they're confusing for you, I hope this video supports you in your learning process too. So thank you again for joining me.